Hi, I'm going to read Coral Reef Hideaway and the subtitle, which is the title that is under, because sub means under. The title that is under the main title is The Story of a Clown Anemone Fish. And this is by Doe Boyle, and it's illustrated by Stephen James Petruccio. It is dawn near Papua New Guinea the western Pacific island north of Australia. The first rays of the sun strike the lagoon and the barrier reef beneath the surface floods with life. The clown anemone fish, Percola, clear, gently stirs the delicate tentacles of her sea anemone home. There she is. And she is, she's sitting in a sea anemone. That's what that, Living in the shelter of its twisting arms, Percola is unharmed by the stinging cells on each tentacle. She is protected by a slimy coating that covers her from mouth to tail. Her enemies would not so easily escape the sting of the anemone. Percola is safe in her hideaway. So she's able to get nestled down in the anemone and not get stung the way other fish would. Tiny sea animals drifting on the ocean current catch on the swaying tentacles. Percola nibbles at them briefly, then wanders away to graze on the fine green algae that grows on nearby coral. A pair of butterfly fish race past Percola. They too are protected from the anemone's darts. With Percola gone, the fish rush to eat her anemone's tender purple tips. Fiercely, Percola charges the butterfly fish. With a swish of their fins, they escape her attack. So she's actually defending the anemone where she lives from those fish. Soon the reef is filled with brilliant midday sunlight. Colorful pairs of angelfish and clouds of yellow damselfish feed among corals, sea fans, and feather stars. A small male clown anemone fish comes to Percola's hideout looking for a home. Percola needs a mate, so she allows him to stay. One day, Percola's mate begins to prepare a nest. Choosing a rock tucked at the anemone's base, he clears away algae and grit with his mouth. He is not the only creature cleaning today. Close by, a coral grouper hangs motionless near an elephant ear sponge. Small fish, called cleaner wrasses, swim around him. They feed on his dead skin and tiny crustaceans attached to his scales. Like dentists, the wrasses also clean his teeth and gills. Percola's mate must be careful. He watches the wrasses while he cleans the rock. If they get the chance, some wrasses will eat the anemone fish eggs. Before twilight, the rock is clean. Percola's mate rests near an enemy mouth as darkness falls. Now sharks, jacks, and barracudas swarm the, around the shadowy reef, snapping up blue tangs and parrotfish who have stayed too long in their daytime waters. Percola and her mate are safe in the anemone. As the nearly full sun moon rises over the lagoon, the reef's night creatures emerge. Like thousands of miniature stars, the coral itself blooms. Squirrelfish and soldierfish leave the sheltered crevices and hunt along the bottom for worms and crabs. In the moonlight, Percola's mate swims rapidly up and down like a horse in a carousel. He chases and nips at Percola.
just before morning, Perkola moves to the clean rock beside her anemone. Swimming slowly in a zigzag pattern, she pushes her belly across the rock's surface and leaves behind hundreds of glistening orange-red eggs. Perkola's mate swims behind her, fertilizing the eggs as they are laid. For five days, Perkola's mate closely guards the nest, chasing away the egg-stealing wrasses. He fans the nest with his fins, providing oxygen-rich water to the eggs. So this is the male fish, and he's taking care of the eggs. So he's defending them and swishing around so they'll have lots of oxygen in their water. On the morning of the sixth day, Perkola awakens to the sound of rainfall. The nearby island is lush and green because of the rains, but today the rain pelts too hard. The island rivers overflow their banks. Mud fills the pushing water, the rushing water, excuse me. Perkola hurries to her mate as the rain drums the sea above her. She needs to help him guard the eggs. So the water's looking kind of cloudy from all the rain. The rain continues. The muddy rivers race down the mountainside. Soon the water of the reef is blurred with fine brown silt. The silt can choke the coral and kill the eggs. Perkola and her mate frantically fan their eggs and keep them clean. They pluck away bits of plants swept along by the murky water. So all the mud is running into the water from the land. And so the clownfish have to keep their eggs clean in clean water by fanning them. Through the cloud of silt, the wrasses appear looking for unguarded nests. Behind them, a pair of butterfly fish search for anemones without anemone fish. They seem to know the silt drives some fish away from their homes. Perkola and her mate do not leave their nest. Perkola darts wildly, clicking out a, a loud warning call to the wrasses and butterfly fish. The startled fish speed away, and Perkola and her mate wait for the tide to clear the cloudy water. Wow, she makes a noise. That's fascinating. And then there they are, staying by their nest and still defending it from any of the enemies. After dark on the seventh day, Perkola's eggs hatch. Tiny and transparent, the baby anemone fish rise towards the moonlight. Do you remember what that word transparent means? It means clear, so you can see right through them. And I'll show you the picture. Riding the ocean current, they feast on plankton. Soon, they leave their parents far behind. Perkola and her mate rest. The anemone wraps its gentle tentacles around them, and the moon pulls the tide quietly over the coral. So there they are resting. And then look, can you see in the illustration how the fish are kind of see-through? They look like they're the same color as the sea. So they're going up high in the water to eat tiny plankton, which is little plants and animals that we can't even see with our eyes. Fairly tiny. And that's the end. And so you know from studying animals that lots of animals, the parents take care of the babies after they're born or after they hatch. But fish are an example where the fish took care of the eggs, but once the eggs hatched, the baby fish automatically know what to do. We call that an instinct. When an animal knows what to do without being taught. So nobody had to teach those little baby fish to go up and eat the plankton up high in the water. They automatically knew as soon as they hatched to do that. So that's an instinct that they have. Just like Pergola and her mate knew that they had to keep the eggs clean when the water got muddy. Pretty cool. All right.